I destroy it. Uh, my heart, it hurts. I'm Chris. I'm Matt. And we're Border 94. We are Border 94. Today we're going to be reviewing Velvet Buzzsaw starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, what was the director's name? No Dan clue. Gilroy? Yeah, that was it. Dan Gilroy. Yes, that was it. Uh, Netflix movie that just came out driving some rave reviews. Hmm. Very much like the first review we did. So what are we going to be reviewing today? We're going to be talking about the plot, the cast, mm -hmm. the acting, mm -hmm. and the entertainment value. So let's dive into the plot. Why don't you jump right into the plot, Chris? Take it away. So plot is you have Jake Gyllenhaal stars as, I guess you, you would be like an art reviewer? Yeah, an art critic. Yeah, an art critic? There is such a thing. If there oh, is, there definitely is. He's yeah. doing it. If someone's buying something, someone's critiquing it. There is no doubt. Well, like we're critiquing this. Exactly. And I'm going to be super, super morphish. I'm going to be honest. Quite frankly, I'm going to be blunt. So morph. He's so, very eccentric character. Yes, eccentric Ooh. character. Like an Andy Warhol type. That's what it seemed yeah. like. Yeah. Just to give you an so idea. So anyway, Jay Gyllenhaal's it. character's name is Morph. Yes. And he is an art critic who is super eccentric, Andy Warhol-ish. Um, and he goes to a gallery. It starts off and they like see this thing called Hobo Man. It's a robot that's supposed to be a hobo on the street. It's really weird. Dressed in almost like the um, uh, Uncle Sam outfit that's all tattered and it's Dude, got... It almost looked like Demolition Man type Yeah, it did. It was very, very, weird. very weird. Um, and he's like, mm. he's on crutches to a horrible man. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, and Jake tells the guy, oh, I've seen this before, it's whatever. Um, he's like, it's absolute dog. <laughs> but he said it in a nice, I guess, an articulate way. But he's going through this gallery, he doesn't see anything super interesting. He, you could definitely say that he's got the sexual tension with this other character, Josephina, who is. I don't remember one character's name. Until you said Morph, <laughs> I had no clue it was Morph. I want to say her name is Zoe Ashton. In real life? Yeah, does or... that sound right? Yeah, it's anyway, great. Her name is Josephina in the movie. And there's definitely there's Josephina. Sexual, yeah, there's, just, there's I, sexual tension, but yeah. now, here's the thing is, J. Gyllenhaal's character is a homosexual. Or at least bisexual. That's what I was going to say. But he comes off as homosexual when you're seeing him. So I'm not so, trying to define people that's... and label them. I'm just saying, based yeah. off of the facts we're given, you would think he's homosexual. Not that it matters. Nonetheless, yeah. all of a sudden there's this sexual tension, and you're like, okay, what's going on? So, this is in Miami, they go back to L.A., then they're fooling around. Oh, with the girl. With the girl, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And, they, and, you, and they're talking about this fling that they had, so you're like, okay, don't quite know where this is going, or where, how this is relevant. He pretty much said, you're my muse. That's a good way of putting it. Yes. Good way of putting it. So, now this girl is working for Rodana... Uh, her last name is Hayes, which is played by Renee Russo. She is an art gallery director. So she's You missed a very important part of the movie, though. What? When they're at the that gallery. first gallery, right? He sees that metal sphere with the reflection, and it almost looks like a big bowling ball. It, it does okay. play a role, but I don't think it's that important. So they're back in L.A. Yeah, they're back so in L.A. So she goes to the Hayes Gallery, uh, Josephina, and... I think she's late or something like that a bunch of times, and she gets fired. So yeah. she's late that one time, and then they imply that she's this is crime. This is thing. it. Yeah. It's, and it's, she's it's what? Did, what was the excuse that she was late? Uh, was it a flat tire, car accident? It was something along those lines. Someone died. Did someone die? Someone died. But someone oh died. Oh my god! Her neighbor. Yes. Yes. Duh, most that's, important part of that the movie. is the most important part of the movie. She's on her way to the elevator to leave her apartment building and she sees like a crutch or something, a cane. No, this, this like old No, guy. that's oh. right. She gets off the elevator, cane drops in yeah. front of her. She looks up, she sees an old hand going through like the railing banister on the top floor. She goes up, she looks, 
She sees it's an old man laying there, clearly dead. She's like, call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. Dead. It was more like this. Didn't make it. Is he dead? Call 911. Call 911. Call 911. He didn't make it. So he did. he's gone. The stairwell, though, looked like the one in American Psycho. It did. It did. And so now she goes to work. She's like, oh, my God, my neighbor died. My neighbor's just like, I don't care. This is L.A. People die every damn day. You need to get your ass to work. That's how this works. Okay? She's telling Jake, oh, I'm going to lose my job. Or we'll call him Morph. Morph. Morph, I'm going to lose my job. And he's like, oh, I just want to get some more of that sweet. She goes back home, she's in her apartment building, and all of a sudden, she hears that they're looking for this old man's cat. So she walks over to the apartment, uh, the entrance, and she sees the door's kind of like cracked open. So she walks in, she's looking for the cat, flickers the light switch on, there's paintings all over the room. Place was a mess. Everywhere, it's a mess. But some are rolled up, some are sprawled out, and... She walks over to the fireplace, she sees one is like half burnt, bad, right? yeah. and like the fire's still kind of like crackling. She's looking around, and she sees these paintings, and they like speak to her. And these paintings are very, I guess we would say surreal? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're sort of surreal, but they, you can definitely see that they're capturing like, some are capturing anger. This guy was tormented. Yeah, Based but there was, on the pic but, that Right, but then there's a couple of pictures that are very like, almost happy looking with like children. It almost like captures maybe a, a memory of a better time before torture. I, I don't know. Yeah, this guy was bad crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's some some crazy stuff. There's some like, uh, what was his name? Salvatore Dali type crap in there. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I, I just went on a whim with that one. So anyway, so she sees these paintings fascinating, so she's like, I'm going to take these things. But yeah. Find the cat. She calls over Jake Gyllenhaal. So there's some supernatural stuff clearly going on. She calls Jake or Morph over, and he's just looking at it. He's just like, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Who painted this? Yeah. Immediately, he's like, who painted this? She's like, who represents him? Yeah. Yeah. I he goes right to that. who represents him. She who says, I do. Me. And he's like, oh, I, I, I got to meet him. And she's like, well, I don't know anyone. I don't know anything about him. He's dead. But she doesn't tell him yet that he's dead. He goes... Think. I have to know who this is. Yeah. Please tell me who this yeah. is. She goes, I can't tell you. Yeah, I can't tell you because he's dead. So, because <laughs> he's like absolutely in love with these things. Now, at that point, I think she goes to Rene Russo, uh, Rodana Hayes, and basically shows her. And now she's like, I got to get these things into the gallery. And then she's like, but you're going to need to categorize this. You need to do this and sample tests and mm -hmm. that and this. And you're not going to be able to afford to do that. I've tried to do it all on my own. So let me represent you, and we'll share some of the profits. Yeah. She wants a piece of the action. She wants a piece of the action. No doubt. Surely. And to kind of just further give an analogy for Morph, he is the Roger Ebert of art. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. 100%. So she, they get into the gallery. Of course it's a hit, as expected. People are just flocking to these things. They all feel like it's touching them in some sort of way. It's extravagant. I mean, the, the following it gets, there's like these other artists that are like characters in the movie that are coming. John uh, Malkovich is one of them. It seems like he's in every damn Netflix movie now. Art, like, I feel like that those type of people almost like when there's a little bit of mystery. Like, I don't want to know everything about the person. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just enough to say, like, okay, he, there's something going on here. He's got some talent, but he's still got skeletons. In the Ain't closet. this artsy fartsy that, you know, sometimes less is better. Less is more. It comes out, they tell you that there's this many, and then in like 10 years from now, all of a sudden, mysteriously, we found 200 pieces of art that no one ever knew about me. Well, of course we did. We had a storage facility. Yeah. And then you charge Buku bucks, and it's just, it's just, it's a gravy train. And that thing doesn't stop. The gravy train. Should we fast forward this bitch? Fast forward. So now, they start getting really okay. so now, all of a sudden, these people start dying. So, Rene Russo's uh, competitor from another gallery, who's tracking John Malkovich and trying to get basically dibs on his uh, art mm -hmm. is basically trying to steal the secretary from Rene Russo, uh, which is the girl from Stranger Things. It's the sister. Uh, yes. I forgot her name is. Totally forgot to. So he steals her. He's going to get dibs on this, and she's basically like, well, listen, I can get you all the contacts of the people that bought the art so that you can get into your exhibit. He's all in on this. One day he's going to leave work. Get stuck in this surreal world from one of the paintings. Next thing you know, hung. Dead. Dead. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yeah. 
Yeah, he died. Yeah. Of course, they're all at the funeral, all this craziness. No one's really picking up on the fact. Now, meanwhile, Jake Gyllenhaal is going through this mental breakdown. Things are moving on walls. He's hearing voices. He thinks he's just losing his all the meanwhile, he thinks it also has to do with the fact that his relationship now with Josephine is becoming a little bit more estranged. Because he was kind of going to break up with his boyfriend, make a life with her. She's I don't know getting if that guy was a boyfriend. No, it was. He mentioned that they were going to get engaged. Oh, really? Yeah, you clearly weren't watching. So, I guess not. The guy's name was Ed. He's basically ready to just like start a life with her, but now she's getting popularity and fame, and she's kind of like, oh, I'm going to do my own thing just with that guy. Yeah, and next she's starting to sleep with another artist. So everyone, it's just a web of lies. Go to the funeral, that guy dies. <laughs> they basically come back. Tony Collette, she's another character. She's basically someone that worked for one of the galleries and a museum, got out of it, and became now a liaison in between galleries and museums for private collectors. That's the one with the weird bangs? Yes. Okay, yes. So she now gets involved in this and somehow starts profiting from these pictures because she's buying it for a private client. Mm -hmm. So notice, everyone that's getting involved with these paintings and paying for them or having something to do with the profitability of these things, die. She goes to an art exhibit that basically as in a museum where she used to work before she quit that job, and the sphere thing is there. So she's walking past, she's like, oh, I'm so happy, I'm going to have all these paintings. This is so oh, weird. look, here's the sphere. Oh, we're closed. This thing couldn't be dangerous. Let me just stick my arm in and... <laughs> arm gets chopped off. Oh. She bleeds to death. Yeah. Dead. Ah. Ah. Dead. Ah. That was like... Ah. The car relax. <laughs> so, that was a pretty crazy part. She dies. So now within three days, people are just dropping like flies. No one can put it together. They don't know what the hell's going on. Except Jake. He starts going, I think whoever's profiting from these things is dying. No one wants to Wow, that sounded just like him. And you gotta look at him. Look at the camera. Yeah. All right, yeah. go on. Everyone's like, "No, you're just being a fool. You're having a breakdown." Now he's like, "I'm done with this." He starts doing some more background on this guy who was the artist. Mm -hmm. Finds out he had an estranged relationship with his father. His father abused him, beat him. He went back, tortured his father for days, and then burned him alive. Mm -hmm. Somehow went to a mental institution, got out of there, and then basically got a job at like some facility. But he realized the paintings were evil. And he was trying to destroy them. Right. And that's why in his will he said no one should have these paintings. Please yes. destroy them. Correct. And guess what they did? There was money involved and they didn't listen. J. Jones Hall, this comes to the realization, basically says he's going to drop this story the next day in an article so that everyone knows about the artist, which is, there's a chance it's going to probably decrease the value of everything, which is going to ruin Rene Russo, Rodano Hayes, and uh, Josefina. This is a risk for him. Because he could possibly destroy his career. Right. And he's already now, at this point, given out a couple of bad reviews to try and help bolster Josephina's career. Uh-huh. So, by kind of ruining this and stamping his name on it at that point, putting his career kind of on the line. He doesn't care. Decides that he's going to go basically take all these paintings or anything that he has involvement with, and he's going to go stick in a storage facility. Mm-hmm. He goes to the storage facility, oh, God. and then all of a sudden he's like, why do I hear a noise that sounds like a robot walking? Hobo man. Hobo man's there. Hobo man tracks him down, pins him, corners him, on a freaking gate, pushes him against him, and goes, I can't save you. Snaps his neck by J. Jones. Well, he's dead. So, basically, now Rene Russo and Josephina kind of like, oh, you know what, let's just get out of this. This could be a little bit crazy. <laughs> Josefina goes to uh, an art gallery and she's about to leave and all of a sudden she's on the phone with Rodana, which is Rene Russo, and she's like, oh, I can't hear you anymore. She becomes part of a painting on a wall outside in a parking garage. She's gone. Dead. So Rene Russo basically calls a company to remove all the paintings out of her house. She wants nothing to do with them. So gone. Meanwhile, she'd gotten her lackey killed. We forgot about that. Yeah. The guy who was going to transport the 200 of them to go hide. He got killed. He was set on fire and killed by a bunch of monkeys in another painting. Oh my god, yeah, dude. That was crazy. So she has them all removed. She almost gets killed by something outside of her house. Doesn't. You're thinking, okay, here we go. Now, mind you, camera shoots, sees a tattoo on her back, which we already knew about, but they really didn't mention enough about, and it says Velvet Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw. which was an 80s band that she was in before she got into the art business. She was a punk rocker. So she's sitting there, and all of a sudden you see an image of one of the paintings that they were pulling out of her house and it looked like a woman sitting next to a cat in the shadows on the side of a house 
with the sun beating on them. Mm. And all of a sudden the camera shows the same vantage point that you just saw in the painting that just removed and I'm like, maybe his painting's told the future now? Like, what's going on? She's sitting there, she feels like, oh, there's something going on. Her tattoo starts bleeding. The buzzsaw becomes a buzzsaw, kills her. Kills her. She's dead. Yeah. Done. Everyone died. To just that was the die. Yeah, she became part of the painting. On the wall? Yeah! So, she, the girl from Stranger Things, that was the receptionist for Rene Russo, that went and worked for the guy that hung himself, then was going to go work for Jake Gyllenhaal, but then he died, was basically like, you know what, screw LA, go back to Minnesota, I can't afford this crazy <laughs> She's traveling, basically, to the airport to go back home, in which she's got the cat from the old man's apartment that was given to her by Josefina. Oh, God. And all of a sudden, she notices these people are, like, selling paints on the side of the street, and she's like, I'll oh, just keep driving. She keeps driving. Whose paintings are them? The 200 that were in the crate that they went to go remove and hide for storage for the future. And people are buying them for $5 a pop on the side of the road. And on the crate, it said Haze. It said Haze. So she made it out. She made it out alive, we assume. Maybe she was just a jinx. Like Maybe we're missing the real point. This is a gooch. I don't know. I don't know either. But you know what? So... I feel like I just rewatched the movie yeah. and actually understood it this time. The plot was kind well, of dumb. Well, yeah, we'll wait until the end really to yeah. get into it, right? Yeah. So uh, we'll go into the the cast. Cast. I gotta say, for for the as much as I may not like the plot, I thought the people, the cast of characters that played the roles, were good for what they were trying to accomplish. Yeah, I think they were too. Jake Gyllenhaal was fabulous as always. Yeah, he was very good. Very good. There's a lot of well-known actors, too. Yeah. Maybe not well-known. No, but Tony Collette, but, John Malkovich, you got the Stranger Things girl, Rene Russo. But if you're in the movies, you Yeah, you know a lot of the characters. Like, they, and they were well-cast. Don't know many of them. But they were well-cast. They were well-cast. For what they were going for, I agree with you. They were well-casted. And that's a great segue. Let's get right into the acting. Jake Gyllenhaal carried this thing. Oh, my God. It's the only reason I kept watching this thing. Yes. He took everyone, he's like, John, Mal John Malkovich was good too. He just he's always good. He wasn't good. in the movie a lot. He wasn't in it But it well. actually was a really good role for him, because yeah. I could see him as an artist. Yeah. Especially one that was like an alcoholic and is now trying to get his crap together, but he realizes that I should have just stayed an alcoholic. Yeah. He was a Carrie Collins of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or Axl Rose. All of them. He was both. Everyone else kind of sucked. They were. It was. They sucked. It's just they. It was shiesty at best. Actually, Josephina was okay. She was okay. She was all right. She was good for a part. The rest of it kind of cheesy. Yeah. To, to me, it, I don't know. Maybe that has more to do with the plot than the acting. And that's what I'm saying. I think the cast, the cast acting for the parts they played was good. It's just the acting. It was more the character. It wasn't the actor. It was the yeah. character they wrote. Yeah. The script too was cheesy in a lot of the, spots. Yeah, the script was. I don't know. Uh, the acting was... If it wasn't for Jake Gyllenhaal, this no. is below average. Wait, It's below maybe average. average with him. I, I would say average at best. You know what? With I th him. think right from there, segue, entertainment. Entertainment value. It didn't entertain me at all. And I, I think... There were moments where it entertained. I think at the beginning, it was entertaining in the fact that I didn't realize what was going on. And it's like, okay, we're just starting right in the middle right. of it, and we kind of have to piece it together. So it kept my... It kept me intrigued, I'd say, like, the first 35 minutes. Right. Just saying, what the hell is going on here? Because I, I had nothing. I knew nothing about the movie. Yeah. Literally nothing. I didn't watch the trailer. I didn't watch anything. Yeah. And it kind of started off fast. I was like, okay, this is promising. And then as it went, like, the paintings... The supernatural being, stuff, was, they could have went a different route. I feel like they could have made it where it turned the person crazy and then they killed themselves. Or went on a... Well, that would killing be like spree. Bird box That's what I'm stuff. saying. They, could, I know, and they actually probably would have been better off if they went that route. The bird box plot, I didn't like that much, but but in it, hindsight, it's it it not. It knocked that out of the park in comparison to this. This, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it was the execution. I don't know if it was the plot. I yeah. think it was the plot and the execution. I wasn't great. It wasn't great. There was too many cheesy moments too. The script wasn't that great. No. Uh, but, uh, it was also very all over the place, too. It you was. never had a good, firm feeling of where the hell they were, yeah. either. Were they in Miami still? Were they in Los, I mean, uh, Los Angeles? Like, yeah. I had no clue where they were. Yeah. From scene to scene. But also, like, where the story was going. 
I feel like they, they led you in a bunch of directions for nothing. I feel like they had an overall plot. Like this is the beginning, this is the end, and then they just started throwing shit up in the middle. Yeah. It was like, oh, let's just throw, let's throw this in here. Yeah, I, I agree. We find the old man. He's next to the the stair banister. Okay, we'll just throw that. In. Actually, that was a good part. Yeah, that's a good part. So the entertainment value, eh. eh, first 35 minutes, okay. The last hour or whatever it was, how long was that thing? Hour and 52 minutes. Hour and 52 minutes too long. That's what I can say about that entertainment value. So I think they kind of under, they kind of know where we're going with this. So but the real question is, does it cross border 94, Chris? Take it away. 2.3. I was just going to say, should the real question be is, <laughs> how far is it away from the border? <laughs> yeah. It's a 2.3, and it's literally only a 2.3 because of J.J. Ohmo's acting. Yeah. If he wasn't in this movie, it literally would be negative. It never, it, it's like a car that stole out in the driveway. Yeah, I would say it was Jake Gyllenhaal, John Malkovich, Josephina, and then the rest are down there. And it just fell apart. Oh, my God. It fell apart. So 2.3, that's by far the worst that you've ever rated so far. Oh, 100%. I think everything you've rated so far has crossed the border. So this is the first thing that doesn't cross the border. And this is also another first. It's a 2.5. That's more than what Chris said. Yeah, that's the first, first time I've ever rated, higher. rated more. Uh, thing's still a piece of <laughs> 2.3, 2.5, so. Semantics. It was, it was terrible. And honestly, I'm probably being too generous with a 2.5. Like Chris said, if it wasn't for Jake Gyllenhaal, dude, I don't even know if it would have started the car. Yeah. It was bad. It was a dead battery. So you got a review there. It's a 2.3. It's a 2.5. This thing doesn't even go close to the border. And I think that's a wrap. That is a movie review for you. That is. Do not forget... The borderline Crazy Question. Yes. $50 Amazon gift card. We're not going to have a Borderline Crazy Question today, so you're going to have to keep watching for the rest of this month into March. Who knows what it'll be. Booyah. But what I will say is don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thank you for crossing Border 94. Deuces. Who oh, I miss that. I'm a sellout.